Hey everybody, Scott Daly here from Carl Stahl Saba Industries. Today we're talking about innovation. Hey everyone, I've got uh, Sava's Director of Operations, Bob Koenig, with me today. And today we're talking about innovation. And uh, in a time when a pandemic has companies sort of scrambling to create workflows, new workflows and new ways to meet a customer's demands and needs, uh, innovation seemed like a particularly timely topic. So I'm delighted to have Bob here. Um, Bob, welcome. Thank you. You bet. So you came from you came to Saba in May of 2019. Yep. Um, after about 30 years working for, I think, among the biggest media companies in probably the Northeast, right? The Tri-State yeah, New area. New Jersey, sure, yep. What, what was the name of the company? North Jersey Media Group. Right, right. And what did you do? For, you were there 30 years. 28. What did you do for 28 years? Um, well, lots of things, actually. But I wound up uh, running vice president of operations and consumer sales there. Encompassed production and support and IT and logistics and delivery and consumer sales and lots of moving parts. And how many people were you managing at the, the height of the, your time? Hmm. It was probably there. somewhere around 500. And, and so this – I'm excited to have this conversation with you because I, I, I've watched – first of all, I've watched you – um, day to day during this crisis since it emerged uh, late February, early March. Yeah. Sort, of, sort of, as I mentioned, scrambling to figure out ways to get a customer's needs met um, and also keep our personnel safe mm -hmm. and, and productive. And so innovation was sort of dancing around as a subject in my head for a few weeks leading up to this conversation. So I'll just start with a real simple question sure. for you. What, what in your mind is innovation? What does it mean? What does the word mean to you? Well, I mean, I, you know, knowing we were going to talk about it, you know, it was sort of a interesting. I wondered why am I going to talk about innovation? Because in my, you know, in my mind, I guess it used to be, you know, smarter people than I in a room somewhere figuring things out, you know, scientists, if you will, engineers and handing a finished thing out the door and saying, here, we've innovated, go, right. go do this. But in fact, as I got to think about it, um, you know, I realize it's, it's problem solving. You know, it's, sure. it, is, it is figuring out how to make sure that, you know, we, we get things accomplished, we get things developed, we get things done successfully on time, orderly, and, and you know. And sometimes innovation, just the word on its face, has like, suggests you're wearing lab coats. Yes, no, it's a lab. very serious word. Right, innovation. And, and so you never really perceived yourself as an innovator. No, I no, I don't. I, I how about haven't. now that we're having? How about now that you've had time to kind of mull over the topic? I guess I think everybody here, to a certain extent, is an innovator. You know, if you really think about you know the problem solving aspects of it, you mm -hmm. think about you know when the when the when the scientists here, the engineers, um, bring forward a new project, right? Then and, and they they it starts to hit the floor in R and D. Um, you know, everybody here becomes an innovator. You know, obviously there's certain people who focus more on the R and D is some of the new things we're sure. doing, but, but there's a lot of involvement and excitement, actually. And now that we, I think you and I can agree that innovation means ideas, sort of the breaking mm -hmm. of new ground, the solving of problems, mm -hmm. and so we're kind of shelving the notion that only scientists can be innovators. Yeah. Um, do you find that you've always possessed a lean toward solving problems? Have you always entered a room? I always think of the Matrix. The Matrix, you know, yeah. Neo was. When Neo realized that this is all imaginary, he was almost trained to ignore it yeah. and focus on the problem and the solution. Do you find that you're just throughout your career, you sort of entered a room with multiple problems and challenges and sort of saw them for what they were? Or is it a skill you had to develop? Is it more of an organic exercise or more of a learned skill to innovate? I think it's, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's probably both depending upon the person. You know, for me, like I, I remember being 19, you know, and working at uh, the loading dock of the newspaper. And back then, I mean, it was dynamic and a lot of moving parts and different dispatches and additions and deadlines and just, you know, it was it was frenetic. And but I dug they, it. Like I loved it. It was all so curious to me how that all came together. That's what I want to know. So you, know, so you had – you wanted to be the guy. I mean, if there was a room full of people, you wanted to be among the people turned to – to put out the big fire, right? To Eventually, I, yeah, sure, sure. I want right. to be in the middle of it. And so what characteristics, this is, this is great, so what characteristics do you believe a person possesses? Let's assume for a minute that, that, that innovation comes organically, forgetting about whether or not you can polish it and perfect it yeah, over time. Yeah, I think you can, sure. Right. So, but what, do you, what characteristics or personality traits do you find you possess or you look for in another person when they are sort of an innate problem solver? Well, I mean, people, you know, I'm, I think curiosity is a big piece of it. You know, curiosity and a, and a, and a desire to, to, you know, what's going on over there? You know, how, how's that work? Why are we doing that? You know, how can I help? Those are the kind of things I think that, that, that 
you know, I think of when I think about. Do you think that innovators are skeptics? Like they're in naturally questioning more. Like they don't take much at face value. They look mm. at the situation, good or bad, and they want to know more. In other words, they're yeah, just I think that's instinctively fair. They don't just settle for, right. They yeah. don't just settle for, okay, I guess this is it. Or that's right. all we can do. People right. are always wondering. Right? Were you Why that are we doing way this? growing up? Were you that way in the earlier huh. stages of your uh, career? I, were you I, just I, curious? Were you just, I think I was curious. I was probably, you know, I had a big mouth and, and sure. annoyed a lot of people. But you know, I was just curious. I wanted to be involved. You know, right. I wanted to learn. I couldn't, you know, I wanted to understand why things worked the way they worked in terms of people and processes. Sure, sure. So when you came to Sava, though, you were entering the, again, director of operations role, which more or less manages the lion's share of our work, of course, mm-hmm. almost everyone. Mm-hmm. And so when you came here, nobody knew who you were. Mm-hmm. And, and there was clearly a culture and an environment, sort of a climate that you were sort of thrust into. So... Did you have any processes that maybe practices that you brought with you or that you detected this situation? It applied to the situation where you entered into the you entered into the production facility where it's filled with, you know, tons of people. And did you have processes where early on in your time with Sava, you were trying to figure out what to do first, second, third, and how to win their yeah. respect. I mean, the pri- I mean, it was, I got some good advice coming in, you know, in terms of who to go to in terms of listening and who to serve, right, if, if you're thinking about servant leadership. But, you know, the reality for the first few months, you wonder, you know, how do I get my hands around this? A lot of moving parts here at Sava too, right? It's a um, lot's going on. And, and I developed this, this habit, which I'm happy to keep and I will keep um, for as long as I'm here, which is hopefully a long time. Every morning I come in and I go see every department head. I come in, mm-hmm. I drop my keys on the desk, I you know log on the computer. It's a simple little thing, um, but it sets the tone. It sets the tone for the day. It lets me understand. And we start early here. You know, by six six thirty in the morning, the place is humming. Um, I get in about seven fifteen or so, um, and it sets the tone. I, I check in with everybody every day, every single day. On the rare occasion that I miss it, I hear about it. So you literally wander the two buildings. Yeah. and well, wander is the wrong word. You're, yeah. you're, some you're people busy. might think it's wandering. <laughs> <laughs> on some mornings What's it might he be doing again yes so no but you actually visit with our our uh, supervisory leadership uh, and just break bread with them talk about what do you talk about what kind depends. of depends hopefully you know if it's going if, if my day is going to go as planned it's really just you know what did you have for dinner last night to see the game you know but um Does, you know, get, but it sets uh, the tone as you say it, yeah i'm available they know right every day they know they're gonna have an opportunity to to lay on me right. um, whatever it is they need right what do they need me to deal with what do they need help with uh, and it's a nice habit. And when I miss it, I hear about it. So it's sort of funny, right? So you hear about it, that they complain. To you. Yeah, and it's not even them. It's like just, you know, our rank and file <laughs> members of the team. Where, where, where were you? I had a conversation last week um, with Eva on the floor, who's mm-hmm. one of our key operators. And, and she hadn't seen me for a couple of days. We had some meetings, whatever we were mm-hmm. doing. And I had to hear about it. Where were you? What have you been doing? How come you haven't been out here? We see, thought maybe when, you were off. So that's when you know you've got <laughs> some normalcy. You've sort of standardized your physical presence. Then they're yeah. objecting when they're yeah. not detecting yeah. it. They're keeping an eye on me, which is a good thing. So what? So this is great. It's a great conversation. So what? 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 What needs to happen in the world or in the world of Sava where innovation is spurred? It. What's the catalyst? What is the launch? The launch pad? The springing. Um, event or activity that causes innovation. I mean, well, I think I th- of COVID, for example. COVID has compelled you to innovate, but but that is a monumental event. It's easier mm-hmm. to point to that and say, oh, this is why of, we're doing this. Yeah, exactly. But right. what putting aside, you know, a pandemic, um, what spurs innovation here at Sava in your daily travels or even before you got here? Well, I think I think the culture here has always been good. You know, I'd like to think, you know, we're all playing a role in improving it as we as we lean forward, right, to these new things that we're doing, which are exciting. I think the culture here has been good. It's a lot of people, very tenured, caring. I mean, really, Sava is sort of part of their, you know, how they breathe, right? Um, we've had a, we have a good crew. And, co- and, and nurturing that and keeping people involved and communicating and listening, um, is really, really important, you know, and letting them know what's happening, you know, in one corner of the room where a couple of people are involved with this new tungsten assembly that we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting. You know, let them know what's happening because they, they're they invested here in the company and they're excited about these opportunities. And look, we sit here, 
you know, we're talking, you know, doing this, right? Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, conversations with, you know, somebody from India and Israel this week and um, letting them know that that's going on keeps them excited because they want to see the company successful, um, which I think is true in a lot of companies. But here they want to see the company successful as much yeah, as the here. president wants to see it successful, which is fun. It's fun to manage, actually. And do you think that, you know, when you say that they miss you when you're not doing the rounds? Well, I don't know if they miss me. They notice I'm not there. <laughs> Fine, miss is too heavy-handed. <laughs> yeah, let's a word not get to too crazy. Right, right, right. A little dramatic. But they notice that you're not around and, and – is it because you've con- sort of compelled them to put more skin in it? Do you detect? You've been here a year and a half. Do you mm. detect that? Uh, like I said a moment ago, we're talking about innovation. So when you first got here, you were probably just trying to figure out how to earn their respect. I mean, yeah. that on its own it's was a, a creative undertaking. But do you find that that there's indicators in their performance and their contributions, tangible or not, that your involvement in their lives has given them a better sense of purpose when they're standing at a machine or they're well, more I mean, invested, I, I, they're more, look, there's more skin in it. I'm a little too modern. You know, I don't know that I've done that. I mean, I see, look, I see that they're invested in it. They, I think, I hope that they feel that, you know, when they have a question, a concern, a comment, an idea, a complaint, you know, that they can feel comfortable. Right, because I've every I'm, there's a familiarity, mm-hmm. you know. There's still a line, right? Somebody's the boss, somebody's not. Sure, but, but there's a familiarity there that they can come and, and be heard. I think it's critical, and I think because of that, you know, they lean in more. You know, when we we're, we're going to need more out of somebody, we're going to need them to deal with. You mentioned COVID. Hey, guess what? You know, we're going to upend your entire world, and you're no longer going to have two days in a row off. You're going to have split days off, and we're going to work Saturdays because we have to get the head count down. They all sort of look at you. What was that like? What was it like to tell these people? Now, we're talking about folks who work in a production facility, mm-hmm. so it's very regimented, right? Their yeah, lunch, break, absolutely. everything is yes. very set. You could, it's probably like a like a Swiss clock in there. Yeah. So what? What we'd like it, to think so. Sure, but what was it like when you had to just flip that on its ear? I and mean, how'd you do that? Just talk. I mean, it, you know, look, they understood. They understood what was going on, you know, and in terms of the regulations and what we needed to do, needed to do, excuse me, to, to continue to stay open and operate as we did, you know, never missed a beat. Um, they understood the brevity of that and what we and, and they, they, they were fine. It was actually fascinating because you always think there's always going to be a few people, right, who, who take issue with something. That's wanna, what I wondered. I want to debate you and why, yeah. why? But that, that didn't happen here. And it was, it was interesting. I mean, look, toward the end, you know, we, we still, we're still socially distanced. There's a tremendous amount of things in place in terms of how we deal with the facility, how we clean it, you know, break rooms, things like that. Um, but we were, you know, we were on 10 hour days for a long time and, and, you know, toward the end, you know, look, it gets to be a long day, but really they were amazing. And can you draw a line between, I know I'm getting that you're modest. I appreciate that. Um, do you, can you draw a line, uh, modesty aside between their faith in you that you've earned over time, visiting them every day to the point where they even notice your absence? Can you draw a line between that and their loyalty to shifting the way they function day to day or giving more time or uh, fractured time? I guess. I mean, look, I think, yeah. I mean, the short answer is I think so. I think well, my say- job, my role, you know, I'm here to listen to them. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm here to listen to them and to give them what they need to be successful. That's a cliche and it's easy to say and you yeah. can read it in 6,000 leadership books, but to right. do it every day is a different thing. Well, and that's, you hope- that's my point to you is that you're talking about folks who – um, who you, you said yourself, they didn't just opt in. They were, it was seamless. They mm-hmm. were just smoothly adjusting their yeah. lives. And a moment ago I said, you could 5S where they put their lunch bags. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can carve out a line around where they put their lunch bag, then I believe that it's worthy of note that they just seamlessly moved into this pandemic yeah. crisis. I, I just think, I, how could it not be yeah, attributed to you walking through the building saying hi all yeah, the time? Yeah, and look, and as, as, we, as we come out of it, you know, as we, well, come out of it, things are changing, right? But as we move through the next phase, if you will, of it, um, you know, there's still, they also see um, a lot of the innovation that's taken place. Not, you know, of course, a, a, a convenient use of the word, right? But they see what's happening with all this new product development. Sure, you know, with the engineering. more prototypical use of the word. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, the, what I thought all it was was right. that just that. Like you, you right. see this stuff happening and, and you know, there's I think they see, I mean, look, we've been we've been a solid, successful company for a long time before yeah. I got here, right? But they see um, with everything that's going on right now, you know, they're 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 excited. They want to be involved. They want to know why. You know, what is that? Oh well it's a new assembly for so and so. Um and it's it's exciting. It's the same kind of they react to everything that way because they're heavily invested here. And I, again I uh, you know 
modesty aside, it's not about me. I think they're heavily invested in this organization for decades. I think the team we have in place now, um, you know, appreciates that. And we're looking to, you know, we're leaning forward and trying to leverage that, that great culture and team we have. And what can disrupt that? I mean, I, we've been very positive, but I am curious. And I think people watching this would want to know what obstacles can present themselves to innovation. I mean, you're trying, you're a lack of sincerity. I think if, if leaders are not, Again, you can you can talk buzzwords and, and pass out business cards all you right, want. Right, you could have all the credentials in the world. And I've seen it. I've seen people right. listen in, in my in my former life in my consulting business. I mean, I've heard stories. You know, you've had I've seen things and heard stories. People come in and think they know better. It's a kiss of death. I mean, I walked in here and people, who the hell is this guy? You yeah, know, who is this guy? And how, what does he know? And again, he came the, from the newspaper business, right? And to, again, to the point where you know these folks are so ritualized mm-hmm. to have this new guy come in, it's got to be a bit unnerving for them. It was unnerving for me too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. I mean, yeah. Look, you gotta you, you need to you need to spend the time to listen and understand what goes on, why it goes on, what the culture is. You can't judge too quickly. Um, I think you know an obstacle. You, you can't just no one person owns the truth. Right? No, no one person knows how everything's supposed to work. I mean, I'm more of a somebody. Uh, somebody that I worked with from Switzerland years ago used to talk about the maestro. Right? A lot of my job is much more about making sure that everybody sort of got what they need. You know, they understand what what tune we're about to play. You know, when we're going to play it, when we take a break. And that's got to make them feel a sense of self importance that they know that the boss is concerned with their satisfaction, their uh, sense of purpose in this uh, large. You know. I am. You know, you don't always get it right. I mean, there's a story out on the floor. You know, these two two uh, two ladies that work in our one of our medical operations, one of our cells. They asked me for new chairs. And this is probably in you know because I'm walking around now. I'm here three or four months, and I'm yeah. you know walking around doing my thing. Yeah. And they asked me for new chairs, and I said, "Well, of course, well, you know, noted. Yeah. So I'll put it on my list." You know, and about six or seven months later, I was on my walk. Yeah. And I saw them again. I saw them a fair every day. Sure. And Did I, they have the new chairs? No, because I forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot. I was like, ah. How'd you feel? I a bit of like a jerk, you yeah, know. I'll yeah. put it on my list. But, you <laughs> yeah. know, the, the win, the opportunity there was, you know what? I'm sorry. I totally forgot. You know, we'll get you new chairs. And we did quickly. And it was a win, right? So, it, so it's not always, you know, perfect. There's a sure. lot going on. But you, I think sincerity and, and listening to people is important. You know, you can't, you know. And what do you think happens to a person when they they know that, not only can they innovate, but they've been asked to contribute to daily innovation. They've been asked to make a situation better, Mm -hmm. which is, that's my definition of innovation, is to actually make situations better, simplify them when they need to be efficient, make them more efficient. What do you think it does to a person? And then maybe even tie it to your folks. I think what makes, happens to someone when they're contributing to the betterment? It, it makes of them more invested. They're sincerely more invested in, in what goes on. I mean, they're not just coming in, punching the clock, and you know, right. pick it's it up, put it down, it's pick a it career. up, put it down. I mean, there's some of that. I mean, some of the stuff we do here is repetitive. I mean, and the trick culturally is to is to make the person who's working on the 11 millionth part for a right. customer who's been here for 20 years yeah. as excited, sure, um, as the innovator. But you know, I think I think people feel invested. You know, and we communicate with them, and and they know all about the a lot of a lot of the exciting things going on here. And you throw that all in a pot, and you have a good, you know, hopefully you have a good culture. And if someone forced you to make a decision between just these two things, understanding you can't pick them both, what would you pick? Uh, and that your options are uh, listening or talking. Listening. And why listening? Hard to believe, a, right? <laughs> You're a chatty dude. Yeah. Yeah, that is a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Much more than this, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're not at What our listeners and our viewers don't know is that you'll interrupt me constantly. It's the only time I get to I'm control I'm very well behaved, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, listening. Why? Why so well, That's quick how you learn. Dis- that's how you learn. I mean, again, think about you. You don't, you know, these are the folks that know. I mean, you know, when you think about innovation, you think about these new assemblies, these things. I watch Gregory Soya interact with, you know, Manalia on the floor and, and, and the history and the understanding. You know, that's, they, that's where this, the, the solutions come from. You know, you have to understand what's happening on the floor, what's happening in the day to day in order for you to help contribute. You know, you can't, they're not just sitting there like, you know, robots waiting for instructions. Right. Let them run. Let them do what they're good at doing. And, and some of that might mean, you know, picking it up and putting it down. We have people here who do rote things over right. and over again here or there, but they're just as important, right? Sure. You know, it, it's, you know, I think everybody, um, not another point I make, I think everybody's, everybody's important. Is that corny? No, not at all. And as someone 
who works in communication, I've always focused on simplifying and reducing mm -hmm. and reducing and reducing. So, I mean, I get the value in making things as simple and as uh, reliable as they can be because of their simplicity, because yeah. you've reduced and you've yeah. hacked away at things. Yeah. I, I just had a meeting with our, our extrusion department. You know, we have, we have between the two guys that run our extrusion uh, equipment and we have 50 some odd years of experience. And we had a whole development about a development, a meeting about process review, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, succession planning and training. And, um, you know, they were, they were, you know, they were interested. Like, what, what, why are you? Know, I'm sitting. I'm trying to extract information from sure. you guys and and transfer that knowledge. Um, it's important. And and they are are they? That's an interesting point. Do they? Do these folks are they used to being asked? How can we make this better? How can we make this simpler? How can we make this more efficient? Um, perhaps some of them are. I think with where we're headed right now, right? With some there's of a little things, bit more attention yeah, on it now. But, you know, with there's a lot of conversations we're having. I mean, you're in the middle of them, right? With a lot of these right. exciting things that we're doing, there's there's more, you know, there's more need for us to create um, you know, capacity, invite people to the table, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of innovation. So there there it seems new, but but it's also familiar because sure. I'm talking to them and we're having conversations in the same tone that we have every morning you know right I mean? so it becomes more knee-jerk because it's just bob talking to his folks yeah so great conversation thank you we're going to wrap it up but i have one more question for you before we do wrap up which is what would you tell other operations folks responsible for large groups of people or even actually small groups of people who need to get buy-in who need people to not just opt into what the company's producing mm -hmm. or the speed tempo with which they are producing it but also they need to opt into the idea that they can contribute to the creative way with which we please a customer, the creative way with which we get product out the mm -hmm. door. What, what do you say to those operations folks who need to usher in more innovation into the cultural f framework of the company? I think you said it already. I think listen, you know, listen more than you speak, um, which again is a cliche, but it takes time, right? It takes time. You have to invest every, you have to develop uh, an ability every day to really understand what's going on on the floor. I mean, and, and oh yeah, again, not get caught up. You know, you go to meetings. Oh, I haven't been out there in a few days. You need to listen and understand. You know what what makes people tick and and everybody. I mean, every you learn something from every single employee in an organization almost every day. You know, if you ask them, mm -hmm. and 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 time is an interesting thing. You know, the more you do that, the more you learn, the more respect I think you gain, and and the team's better for it. Sure, sure. So. Thank you, Bob. Thank this you. was a great conversation. You. Um, if you like this conversation, make a comment, leave a comment in the uh, uh, below the video. Please subscribe if you also enjoy this content. And if you have a suggestion on a particular topic you want us to dive into, also make that comment as well, and we'll be glad to turn it into an episode. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.